Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the Soulpreneur Network. I'm so excited to bring you this week's topic, which is all about asking for what you deserve in life in business. But first of all, I want to welcome my friend, Alice. Welcome to the Soulpreneur Network. Thank you so much. I'm so excited to be here. Me too. I know you're going to teach us some really good things today, and I'm excited to see how many people go ask for what they want after this video. <laughs> So like I said, today is all about learning tactics and strategies for asking for what you deserve, want and deserve in life in business. So Alice brings us some very fun um, expertise. So Alice, would you mind just introducing yourself, letting us know what you do and who you serve? Yes, Kelly, thank you. So I'm out of Oakland, California, and I am a mediator and a negotiation coach. I have 20 plus years of theater experience um, in acting and directing. So I bring a lot of that knowledge base that I have from that field into my mediation and my negotiation coaching programs. And um, some of the things that I mediate are divorces, workplace conflicts, family conflicts, and that sort of thing. So anywhere where there's like, you know, high conflict, high emotion, I love helping people get to a resolution. And I'm excited to hear about how the acting helps. <laughs> I'm sure you're going to touch on that because yeah, like maybe it's the adopting a different persona, right? Adopting a different archetype. If you're not comfortable, we're going to get into it. I'm sure. Am I on, am I on track though? No, it's more like the emotional intelligence that you get when you are studying acting, trying to understand what's happening to the other actor that's okay. your partner. And I use that to read people in the room constantly. Got it. And I would think though, like, you know, from my side of it, like if, if I'm not feeling comfortable having a conversation, but adopting my superwoman archetype for the moment could possibly help me as well. So I'm going to weave that in. So for those of you who don't know me, I am Kelly Geisler Wilson. I'm a business coach for soulpreneurs and I really help soul establish soulpreneurs expand and grow their business, overcome technology hurdles, and really develop emotional and energetic mastery to generate the income and impact that they desire and deserve. So together, Alice and I wanted to bring you this conversation and we're going to kind of look at it in two parts, because if you're going to ask for what you want, first, you need to know what you're asking for. And so we're just going to go into like the energetics of it for just a minute. First is ask, knowing what you want. And I'm going to just explain it that way is if you're going to go into a conversation or go into a sales conversation or go into any sort of a negotiation, Alex, Alice is the expert on that. Um, if you don't know what you want from an energetic perspective, it's a diffuse conversation. And I'm sure you can, what, what do you say to that? Cause I know you carry a different side to the whole conversation here. I see it as an energetic of it's a very diffuse conversation and you might be running around in circles then if you don't know what you're asking for. So that is a hundred percent correct. I just talk about it from a different lens, like mm -hmm. you said. Um, what happens is if you don't prepare for any kind of a negotiation, and you know, the bigger the negotiation, the more you should be preparing. It's not even that you don't know what you want. Let's say you know what you want, but if you haven't done the research, then there are, are a lot of gaps in your knowledge. What are those gaps? How about market rate for whatever it is that you are providing, whether as an employee or as an entrepreneur? Um, what what is the other person's budget what is the other person even looking for mm -hmm. what are their interests what are your interests so that you can have some bargaining chips there's a lot of holes right so you need to be able to prepare because that energetic um running around that you're talking about is basically caused by a lack of knowledge so that you're unable to come to a discussion and a negotiation knowing the entire picture mm -hmm. so that you can say, hey, this is what I deserve based on this data, this data, this is the market rate, right? right? And that sort of thing. And so you end up spinning your wheels and you do lose a lot of energy because all the energy is going towards creating something that actually is not in existence because you didn't do your homework. Right. 
right? Or you might be exploring this and this and this instead of really being focused on getting what you want, you know, or having that conversation of what you want. So then the next step is really believing you deserve what you want. And I call this all energetic alignment. And we can start walking into limiting beliefs in this conversation of if let's just say I'm going to go into a conversation or for me, I'm going to go into a sales conversation. Let's just say I say, if you want to work with me for one-on-one for a year, it's going to cost you $100,000. I know coaches that charge that. I do not charge that. And it makes me scared to even think about that, right? From a coach that says that's going to put a number on their service. And if I'm not aligned and really believing I am worth and my services are worth $100,000, that's going to be communicated verbally, energetically. And as Alice said, how she reads the room, if you're adept at reading me, you're going to feel me squirming and hiding and, you know, and, and just not feeling confident that I deserve that money and that my services hold up to that value as well. So I, that is kind of like step two is making sure you believe that you deserve what you're asking for. So what's your lens on that, Alice? So it's really interesting because one of the things that I always coach people on is I say, if you are talking a lot while you're trying to close, you're doing something wrong, right? So it's not about, I don't want solopreneurs to speak a lot because they're trying to cover for the fact that they don't believe mm-hmm. that they, they are worth that right? What I want you to do when you're trying to close your own services. And oh, by the way, caveat, it's very interesting that many women say, when I used to work for this company and I did sales, I had no problems. I Mm -hmm. sold so much volume, but when I'm selling my own services, I'm struggling. Okay. It's, It's a very common thing that happens. And so what you want to do is you want to really find out about the other person, particularly when you're closing right? So it's not about this is how much I'm worth. It's going to cost a hundred thousand, et cetera, et cetera. You should be asking questions like, what are your goals? Mm -hmm. How do I fit in as a coach for your goals? How soon would you like to, you know, reach your goals? How important are these goals to you? How much time and energy are you willing to put in to make sure that you reach these goals with or without a coach? Mm -hmm. And ask a lot of these questions and have a mutual dialogue that is deeply caring about the other person. If you have that conversation, these sales conversations don't feel like sales conversations Mm -hmm. at all. Mm -hmm. It becomes a dialogue about, hey, Kelly, let's work together. How can I help you? Let's learn about you and what you need. And so therefore I can talk a little bit about, you know, I would, I'm saying as a, as a person who's selling, I would talk a little bit about the services, but ultimately I'm trying to serve you. Mm -hmm. And I can't do that if I'm in my head about like, how much am I worth? Can I do this? This feels so expensive. Or will they say yes? That sort of thing. I can't serve you if I'm in my head about my own fears. I love that you called that out because I agree with you as sales. Like my approach to sales is really sitting in that place of service and serving the client, even if they don't invest in me, it is about serving the client. And I love that you highlighted, you can't even be in that place if you're blocked by not even believing in what you're talking about or standing for what you're representing. So I love that you brought that piece into it. Very, very cool. So I know you're going to get into some more hidden elements here of negotiating, holding space to make it happen. So can you give us another context? Because I know we're exploring some sales conversations. We're exploring, you know, working in business. But can we use another example why you go into this next element of the of our conversation? So basically, it's about using negotiation tools, right? the the next part that you're Mm -hmm. wanting to talk about. And the best negotiators have these strategies at their fingertips. And you don't want to be disadvantaged by not having these. Because if you're going up against a really good negotiator, I don't want you to really think, oh, they're here to try to beat me down, or they're here Mm -hmm. to bully me to get what I want, right? Really what's happening is that two very strong negotiators work together to get to a win-win solution. But if you don't know the strategies, you are putting yourself at a disadvantage to be able to get the best outcome for everyone. 
And it's so important to know these strategies because otherwise I can't tell you how many times when I've mediated, people are coming in and they're in small claims court, for example. Most of the time, these are negotiations about a small amount of money. The money is 10,000 or less because that's what small claims caps it at. And so they'll come in and these are usually unseasoned negotiators or maybe one side is and one side isn't, right? And if someone comes in with a very high number, which is a tactic, mm -hmm. and the other side does not understand that this is a tactic, they get offended, they say no, and they walk away. And it never resolves. And then it goes right back into court. So you don't want to be that person that's not understanding what's actually happening, mm -hmm. right? Because it's kind of like, uh, you know, negotiation is a game. So if you're watching a soccer game, you need to understand sort of the rules of the game, the rules of engagement that, you know, one side has the ball, they kick it down, they kick it into this thing that looks like a goal. And if it goes into this, you know, small mm -hmm. area of space, they get however many points, right? But if someone doesn't understand whatsoever, then you A, can't enjoy it. And you can't really understand like what's happening when you're watching it. And you don't want to be that person. If you're engaging in a negotiation, you want to know the rules of the game so that you can play it well. And I would say in C is you can make a story about yourself. And if you do have doubts creeping in, it's just creating more doubt for you to creep in. You know, you made that story of that person's offending me, not oh, they're using this tactic and I see what they're doing. So then you go into they're offending me. They don't see, you know, you can generate all these stories to put you in a very different plot line, if you will, versus, oh, it's just a tactic and I know how to play this game. Exactly. And exactly. And it's the same thing even when you're doing salary negotiations. So you'll usually have a company who is very seasoned because they make offers all the time, right? And someone who might come in mm -hmm. for their very first time has no idea whether they should accept it, not accept it, countering, what should I counter at so I don't offend them? They have no idea. You're like stabbing in the dark. Don't be that person. Right. Yeah. I mean, I think of all the, I think of all those times when I worked in corporate and I was trying to negotiate, I'm like, can I just ask for this much more? And just like, yes, had I had some skills, I probably would have went in very confidently versus trying to just be like, be that mouse that say, can I please just have five grand more? <laughs> Exactly, exactly. And I want people to be empowered. You know, I particularly care a lot about women because women do feel like they are disempowered many times. Mm -hmm. And I want to empower them so that they can go and get everything that they ever deserved, wanted, dreamed of because it's out there. So what are a couple tips that you can offer? I know you have a full program dedicated to this, which I think is wonderful, you know, to, to up-level your negotiating negotiation skills. What can you like some just quick tips that you can offer? Are there any quick ones? <laughs> yes, there are. So let me just talk about counter offers, right? So counter offering, it's really great if you're going to start, you know, if you're talking about money and you're offering and I heard you just now say, oh, I just need five grand more. What I would have advised you is to say, if you need five grand more, ask for 10 grand more mm -hmm. because you need negotiating room. And if you ask for the exact amount that you want, you left, you have left yourself with no room to negotiate because that's what you need, right? You need that 5,000. So if you ask for 10 grand more, they will counter with something lower and you come back down and eventually you get exactly what you want, which is the five grand. Mm -hmm. So whenever you want something, never counter with the amount that you want. <laughs> Always counter with either more than you want, or if you're trying to keep something low, you're on the lower end then you want to counter like lower, mm -hmm. always leave room for negotiating. And that just means that you counter at a higher or lower number. The other thing is if someone comes to you and they give you an offer and you feel like it's too low or too high, don't walk away, counter, yeah. counter. And again, leave yourself room. So don't go directly to the number that you want. Okay. You want to like leave yourself room to go back and forth. So what I'm hearing from this, and you know, I know you and I carry two different lenses, what I'm hearing from this and what I'm learning from this is it's, it's tactics, meaning it's not an emotional transaction. It's really a tactical transaction. And that's the messaging I'm receiving from that first tip of, you know, Kelly, check your emotion at the door. Again, you know, like don't generate a story from this. It's just tactics right now. It is just plain ball, if you will. It's not putting your emotions on the line, your heart on your sleeve and saying, please tell me I'm worth it because I already know I'm worth it when I'm coming to this conversation. 
Yes, absolutely. I recently coached someone on, um, someone got headhunted and they had a job offer and they were perfectly fine at their current job, right? So I asked, my question that I asked was, what is the number that they have to hit for you to say yes and change jobs? Mm -hmm. And that amount was about 15,000 more than the base salary where she currently was. So I said, great, you're going to counter at 30,000 more. And at first her eyeballs <laughs> went <laughs> wide and, and I explained my, I explained exactly what I told you, which is you are dealing with a seasoned negotiator on the other side. If you counter at 30,000 more, they are going to know exactly what you were doing. They're not thinking that you're going to ask for that amount. They know that this is just a counter to bring their offer. Right. So when she went back to the recruiting person, the recruiting person's jaw fell open and they said, are you sure you want to ask for 30,000 more? And she made some explanation as to why. And she said, I will um, accept a reasonable counter. Mm. And guess what? The next offer that came from the company was the exact magic number that she wanted. And she changed jobs. And you know what I love about it too, is it also kind of communicates I'm, I'm the type of professional that plays ball. Like, yes, I know what I'm doing as a professional. Yes, yes, absolutely. So that is another thing that I told her. I said, believe me, when they hear a number that's 30 grand more, they're going to say, okay, we know she's here to play ball and we're going to counter because she just countered and we know exactly what she's doing. So if you're playing the game and you're dealing with someone who's also playing the game, they're going to recognize that. And they're going to be like, all right, Kelly is in the game to negotiate let's throw her a counter. Now, mm -hmm. if I know this and I, and I know I can't possibly make, you know, what you're looking for, because what you want to do is you want, you're looking for the midpoint, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So the midpoint was exactly where she landed. But if I, and the person making you an offer and you come up at 30,000 more, and I look at the midpoint and I'm like, there's no way I can come close to the $15,000 midpoint. I'll walk away. But guess what? You should get the information that if I walk away, it's not because you countered 30,000 more. Mm -hmm. It's because I can't even get to your midpoint. Right. So then that gives you information. Just me walking away gives you information. There's no way I could have even given you what you wanted. Right. So again, See? be careful of the story that you weave. Exactly. Um, so here's the fun thing, you know, who I am as a coach, I'm all about, you know, the soul, the heart and the energy in the business. So I would typically never tell someone to go play the game. <laughs> you know, that's just not my normal strategy or modus operandi of the way that I run business. And again, the value that I'm getting from this conversation is it really is important in these situations. So I think, you know, and again, we can go back to that sales conversation again, because you can bring that heart and that emotion into it. And when you really are, and Alice said it at the beginning too, you know, think about what you're really there for. Let's go back to that sales conversation. What are you really there for? It is not for someone to prove that you are valued at, you, you are valuable. It is the other person is not here to show you, you know, that you're worth what you're charging. That is not what the sales conversation is all about, right? It is not to prove that you have something uh, of value into the market. It really is they're here because they have a problem and they think that you might be able to solve their problem. And you can really, again, I love that you said this is just go into that posture is what I say or orientation. I am here to serve you and really bring to that conversation. So when you talk about money, it's the transaction. And I'm okay with saying like, it is a transaction, meaning take the heart out of it, take the emotion out of it. It is a transaction. And, and the way that I think of it is, is, um, you know, I'm inviting you into my ecosystem to, to experience what I have to serve to solve your problem. You know, we are going to work together and we are going to solve your problem, but always maintaining that service. So again, I'm just weaving it all together for myself and for other solopreneurs that are listening out here is um, there is a valuable time to take the emotion out of the conversation and to take, you can still serve without the emotion in the conversation. And so I think that was a key differentiator from what I'm hearing you say and really understanding the dance that's happening empower yourself with the dance. 
Exactly. I mean, I think the more I, I want to reiterate this, but I said earlier, if you're starting to feel like you're in your head, yep. start asking questions about the other side and what they need and what their pain points are. Okay. Because once you, and you need to listen, yep. you can't just throw out questions, listen very, very deeply, and then ask deeper questions based on their answers. Mm -hmm. When you do that, you take yourself out of the whole equation, meaning your, your thoughts, your self-sabotage, all of these thoughts go yep. away because now I am fully embracing who you are, what you need, where you are stuck, and how can I help you? Love it. Yes. I love right? that we yep, added that to the conversation. Absolutely. Yes. And if someone asks too soon about how much do you cost, let's say, Kelly, you have a whole spiel and you kind of want to talk to me and you want to ask me questions and I call you on the phone and I go, okay, bottom line, how much is it? There's always a way to sidestep that conversation. And you can say, listen, Alice, I understand that the finance is pretty much the biggest piece of it for you. And we will get to that. Mm -hmm. Let me first ask a few questions. Now you have sidestepped that conversation. Right. So just because the other person is insistent on talking money first, don't fall into that trap. You can control it so that you talk money last. And then first you talk, and it's not even so much the value you bring. Of course you bring value. Everyone brings value. It's a matter of where are they? Mm -hmm. Are they ready to work with mm -hmm. you? Right. Are they ready to put in the work and the effort and the time, right? Are they willing? Because if right. they're not willing to do that, no amount of you talking about how great you are and how your services are worth it is going to sell them if you can't understand where they are right now. And I'm going to add to it. And if they aren't ready, it's not a priority. You know, they're really in a tight spot, whatever. And it's not a focus for them. And you somehow still make the conversation because you had a goal and you wanted to make the number. There's a lot of misalignment in that transaction. And actually the service, what I have seen is the service will be harder to deliver because they're not ready. They weren't in alignment. Uh, I had a conversation very recently and it was a great conversation. And I felt very successful at the end of the sales conversation because really she understood her core problem, which was she didn't know if it was a now priority for her. Exactly. Period. Exactly. Success. She yes. got her core problem identified in it. And it was like, okay, well, you know, okay, now, you know, the next step, which is she had to figure that out. And maybe then I become the solution after that point. But really that was her next step was to figure that piece out. And I want your listeners to be able to get to that answer sooner rather than later so that you are not spinning your wheels, trying to sell to someone who's not ready for your services. Yes. Yes. And it all comes down to negotiating. It comes down to listening deeply. It comes down to the art of asking questions and that sort of thing. So yeah, it's, it's gonna, really wonderful. And I'm going to keep saying this again, because this is the value I'm getting. It's coming down with taking the, the, taking the emotion out of it too. Absolutely. And I mean, the emotion that should be there is the care, right? The and care the that you have and the service, right? Yes. Not your own emotion about yourself. Correct. Thank you. Yes. Thank you for the clarification. Yeah. So I think that if people can let go of the outcome, mm -hmm. right? Just like you said, if you had held on to the outcome with the woman that you were talking about and you were desperate to get her business, then you would have been very upset when she was like, well, actually this core problem is not my priority. But if you can let go of the outcome, you can say, great, come back to me when you're ready to work on it, when it becomes your number one priority. And then you will not have all these feelings that are like rattling around inside of your body. Right. right. Yeah. Very good. So we just offered and delivered a lot of action items, things to keep, you know, to remember. I loved what you said too, to just say, if you're doing most of the talking, check yourself. Am I doing most of the talking? Am I really hearing from them? What posture am I in? What energy am I holding in this conversation? Is it to be of service? Is it to really deliver value in that conversation? Because really, I think you deliver service and value from the moment we meet, you know, and it is about connection. It is about how can I help this person? And are they, can I help them now? Do I help them later, right? And um, getting that clarification. Uh, let's see, we talked about being clear of what you want. We talked about focusing your energy. We talked about believing 
that you deserve what you want so that you can show fully present in, in the right posture in the conversation. We also talked about just understanding more of the tactics so you understand the dance that's happening. So you don't make a story out of it, but you really understand how to show up and to show up confident, confidently to the conversation. So I know you offer a program and I heard this everyone and I'm like, everyone needs to hear about this program. So can you share with us your program? Absolutely. Thank you so much for the opportunity, yeah. Kelly. I really appreciate it. I offer an eight week program where you come in for an hour and a half with a small group of people, usually eight people. So it's really small, very intimate, and you practice difficult conversations, you practice negotiations, you practice closing sales. And I really try to custom tailor the course for the participants. So before you come in, I say, Kelly, what do you want to practice? And then I make sure it's incorporated into the eight weeks. And so it's online, so anyone can join. And um, I start a new cohort every single month. So I'm always looking for the next eight people who are interested. And so, yeah, if you are, if your listeners are wanting to learn more, they can go to their website, um, which I'll have posted, and then they can check out the uh, the course. Yeah, just think of the infusion of confidence and that empowered knowing of how to dance on that dance floor. We'll just call it that, how to make that dance. It's a new foxtrot. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, one week you teach the tango, the other week you teach the foxtrot. <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> I about you know, I yeah, this is just me simplifying and understanding in my mind of what you do because I think it's just phenomenal. So thank you for sharing um, all of your expertise today. Is there any final thoughts that you want to wrap this up for us? So you mentioned like be believing in yourself and that's really important because when you go and make that, you know, $30,000 counter offer, you have to be able to say it in a way that is believable, right? So it is important to do that inner work that Kelly does with people yep. because you can't actually say the words of like, I'd like 30,000 more if you're every single fiber of your being is fighting it. Yes. Right. And also just a little bit of tip for those of you who feel like, oh, well, I don't know if I'm worth this or that. It's, it's not a matter of, I mean, there's pricing all from from really really cheap to really really expensive right there's all kinds it's like what do you want to offer the world where do you want to show mm -hmm. up and so like your price point is really not so important like it's just really like what are you comfortable offering and and then you can always raise it you can raise mm -hmm. it so you go incrementally up right but um i i don't want people to feel like oh my gosh like i'm not worth this there are people who charge very little. There are people who charge like lots and lots and lots of money, right? Even in, in, um, in mediations, there are people who charge 250 an hour and judges who charge 10,000 an hour. It, is, it runs a very wide gamut. So pick the place where you feel like this is where I want to be. These are the people I want to serve and just go from there. Right. The best, because there's enough business for everyone. Yes. And the best piece of advice I got is don't compare yourself to other people's prices, because if you do, you're comparing yourself to their limiting beliefs. So that judge that might charge 250 an hour versus 10,000. And it's like, ooh, maybe I want to do 2000. And I see this judge of 250. You're just judge. You're just comparing to their limiting belief. So don't do that and own it yourself. And thank you for, yeah, my plug in as well. So if you are interested in really doing deep inner work, I offer an eight week program called Activate the Quantum Upgrade. And that what we do in this is we create a goal. We create a couple goals and then we identify every block because we sabotage ourselves. We, whenever we create a goal and the reason why I think it's like, 80, 90% of goals fails because we sabotage ourselves in many different ways. And we go throughout the program of looking at um, the fears that are blocking us, the limiting beliefs that are blocking us, that my wounded masculine and feminine, my relationship with money that's blocking us and so forth. So I will also have information about that program down below. But Alice, and I do want to say one more thing. If you are a solopreneur that is looking for support on your solopreneur journey, please go ahead and subscribe to this channel and click that bell so that you can get notified because I want to do it with you. I want to walk beside you on your solopreneur journey and continue to bring in guests like Alice to have these high vibe conversations to really help support you. So Alice, thank you. You've been a wonderful guest. I appreciate everything that you shared today. Thank you so much for having me, Kelly.